doing? Shh. You have to be quiet. Have to be quiet? Why do I have to be quiet? I'm practicing for today's lesson in kids' time. You're practicing? Yes, I'm hiding. You're hiding? Yes, shh. Don't let people know I'm here. Okay, shh. You don't think we should get back, get to the, the lesson uh, no. today? No, no, I, do you want to hide, here, do you want to hide with me? Oh, sure. Here, sure. hide under here. Oh, wait, 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 here, you're going to need this. Oh, okay. Um, now they can't see us, right? Right. Nobody can see us. And if we're quiet, nobody can hear us. Shh. Stand still, okay? Shh. You don't think we should get to the lesson? We are getting to the lesson. Oh, I'm oh, practicing. You're practicing? Yes. Do you know our lesson today is about a man who was hiding? Um, he was hiding? Yes, he was. Shh, shh. But yes, he was hiding. Why? You really want to know? Yeah. Oh. I wonder if our friends want to know. Well, when they get here, we can tell them. I think they're here. They are? They are, yeah. Oh, let's oh. get to it. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, nobody told me you were here. I'm sorry. Let me fix my hair. Is my hair sticking up? No, it's okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Whoa. Well, it was hot under there. <laughs> Wasn't that cool, Pastor Peterson? <laughs> that was pretty cool. So we were practicing this morning for our lesson. Welcome to Kids Time. I'm so glad that you're here. Today we're going to learn about a man who was hiding. Do you want to know why he was hiding? Pastor Peterson does. Do you want to know too? Yep, Jillian said she does. Well, he was hiding because he was afraid. Sometimes we hide because we're playing a game. We hide because we're playing like hide and seek or, you know, we're teasing somebody or something like that. But this man was hiding because he was afraid. Now, you're going to need some things this morning for our kids' time lesson. Make sure you have your journal or some paper so you can take notes so that you can go back to it and think about it and remember the things that we talked about today. Maybe you're like one of my sons and my daughter. Maybe you like to draw while you're listening to something and you could draw what you're hearing. So whatever you need your journal for, either writing or drawing, make sure you have one, something that you can use to write. And of course, we always need our Bible when we come to kids time because here in kids time, we're learning about things that are totally true from the Holy Bible, God's word. Something else that you might need later today, or you can just pretend if you want to. See if you have a paper napkin or a piece of construction paper, maybe something like this. Um, maybe even a piece of tissue paper, like from a birthday gift bag, because we're going to make something. You get to participate in the story today. Okay, so when you have all those things together, run right back here. And we are going to have an amazing time discovering something from the Word of God. Now, I want to tell you, before I start telling you today's Bible story, I want to tell you where you can find it in the Bible. Because the story that we're going to uh, look at today is lots and lots and lots of verses in the Bible. So, I'm not going to take the time to read all of those verses today, because then we would just spend all of our time reading reading and more reading. I like to tell stories. Do you like to tell stories too? Pretty sure you do. Some people don't and that's okay but some of you do. I can tell. So you can write in your journal and then you will remember where to go to but you can also turn in your Bibles to the book of Judges. Judges is at the beginning portion of your Bible and you're going to find Judges chapter 6. And the story that we're looking at today really starts at verse 11 in Judges chapter 6. And it goes all the way to the end of that chapter. And then into chapter 7, all the way down to verse 25. So see, that's a lot of verses. And we're not going to read them all this morning. This story is about one man in particular but also a large group of people. Our Bible point for today is God is always with you. 
And like I was practicing this morning with Pastor Peterson, I was practicing hiding because I wanted to know what would it feel like to be this man? Maybe what do I think it would feel like to be this man in our Bible story today? We're going to You'll be able to read about him in Judges chapter 6 and 7, but we're going to talk about him today. Now, if you're right there with us and you are able to type in on your computer or your phone or your iPad to let us know that you're here, put a comment there. Tell us your name and where you're watching from. We would love to comment a special hello to you today. I'm so glad that we can come together like this. We really wanted to be outside for our services today but there's thunderstorms coming and I was thinking about it if I was afraid of something like the man in our Bible story today maybe thunderstorms might have been something that I was afraid of or maybe if I was afraid of something maybe I'm sometimes afraid of being by myself or alone not knowing what to do do you ever feel afraid I think we all feel that way sometimes, but we don't have to be afraid today because we are hearing all about the amazing truth that God is always with us. And when we know that God is with us, we have no cause, no reason to be afraid. There's a Bible verse in the book of Joshua. It's Joshua chapter one, verse nine. It says, the Lord, your God is with you wherever you go. It doesn't matter where you go. He can find you. He even knew that I was hiding this morning. He knew where I was. You knew where I was too because you're smart like that. You knew that was me. <laughs> but God knows where we are if nobody else knows. And he doesn't just know where we are. He's with us where we are. It's important for us to remember that. And we're going to look at a story today about a man who needed to know that God was with him. He was one of a group of people called God's people or called the Israelites. Sometimes you might have heard them um, referred to as the children of Israel. They were God's special people, chosen and specially loved by him. And there was a man living among them whose name was Gideon. Now you might have heard of the man named Gideon before. And Gideon was able to do some incredible things because of God's strength in him. But by himself, Gideon was not a very brave man. On his own, Gideon felt afraid sometimes. Now we have said that sometimes we feel afraid. It's not nice to feel afraid, is it? We don't want that feeling to stay around. But if we don't want to feel afraid, we have to deal with the thing that's making us afraid. We have to, what we might say, confront that thing. We have to get over that thing, get through that thing. We have to face it. On my own, sometimes I don't feel like I can face and overcome the things that make me feel afraid. But with God's help, I can always push through those things, and so can you. This is what happened with Gideon. So let me start to tell you some of the story. A couple of weeks ago when we were together here in Kids Time, I mentioned to you about the children of Israel being at a place and at a time in history where they were getting ready to go into Jericho. You remember there were spies that were sent in by Joshua, and a woman named Rahab hid them, they went in to spy out Jericho to see what they needed to do to have victory and to conquer that place so that that city, which was a part of the land that God had promised to give them, would become theirs. So they went in and did that. And now the children of Israel, they've been through Jericho and they've moved further into the promised land and they're living in a place where they have a whole bunch of enemies surrounding them. The people that they were faced with and the people that were making them afraid, people who were being mean to them and making them scared were called the Midianite people. And do you know those Midianites were so mean 
and so nasty that they let all of their cows eat all of the grass in the fields so the children of Israel could not let their cows eat and have the best water and food that they needed to grow healthy and well. And so also the children of Israel grew crops. They grew like grains that might be used to make bread and other things. And whenever the crops were ready to harvest and the food was ready to be made into what they could eat, the Midianites would steal from them and take what they had. That's not nice, is it? No, we don't do that. That's not kind. But this is what the Midianite people did. And the children of Israel, God's people, thought, what are we going to do? This enemy is so large around us. And they needed God to help them because on their own, they were not going to be able to conquer the enemy. So one of the children of Israel, one of God's people, was a man named Gideon. And Gideon was clever. He was very smart. When it was time for him to harvest his grain and bring it in from the fields, there was a process that had to happen with the grain to make it ready to be ground into flour to make bread. They had to do what we call threshing. And basically you would take the grain and you would smack it against something so that what wasn't good and what you couldn't eat would fall off and what would be left was the stuff that you could use things that you could use to make food normally you would do threshing outside and in fact you would try to find a hill to go up on i love being on hills do you it's awesome because you can see for so far when you're high up like that and you know the other thing people can see you when you're up there and so Gideon decided he wasn't going to go up on a hill because the benefit of going on a hill to to beat and thresh your grain was so that the wind that was blowing would just blow away all the pieces that you didn't need it's kind of like the outside cleaned up for you isn't that cool <laughs> wish there was a way that the wind would come in and clean up my room sometimes I'd like that how about you yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so Gideon didn't really want to go where everybody could see him because he didn't want his grain to get stolen. So he hid in a place. It was kind of like a deep well, but a dry one. And he was hiding in there, beating and threshing his grain, fearful that someone was going to find him fearful, afraid that somebody was going to take away what he needed for himself and his family and the people around him. Because the enemy was clever and they were not nice. They were pretty nasty, actually. So while he was in there, he was busy doing his work, cleaning the grains, threshing it. And the angel of the Lord went right to where he was, appeared to him, the Bible says. Now remember, he was afraid. I wonder how he felt when the angel came in where he was. But the angel didn't just come and stand there watching him, looking to see what he was going to do. The angel was also not sent there to guard over him. The angel came with a message from God. The angel came in to this man who was hiding and said, Greetings, mighty man of valor. Some Bibles might call him a mighty warrior. And I kind of laughed when I read that. I thought, are you kidding me? Really? This guy who was hiding is called by the angel of the Lord a mighty man? I don't think so. A man of valor? A warrior? When I think of a warrior, I think of something. A person who's big. Somebody who's fearless, somebody who can deal with the enemy. That's not what I thought of when I read about Gideon this week. I thought, oh, poor guy, he's scared, he's hiding. And then the angel of the Lord comes and calls him a mighty warrior, a man of valor. You know, God knows something about us that we don't know about ourselves. God knows that there's a strength in us that we might not know is there. And God has created us 
and built us for a purpose. That's what we're learning through our lessons these week, weeks. God is with us. And he is giving us everything we need to serve him. So the angel of the Lord had a message for Gideon. He told Gideon what God thought of him. And as the story goes on, and you can read some of it in your Bibles, hopefully you'll read the whole story, you'll see that there were instructions given to Gideon. Boy, things were a real mess for him and the children of Israel. They didn't know what they were going to do. But I think when the angel appeared and came to Gideon, he realized that he was not alone. Just like we're learning this morning, God is always with you. Like our friend Bubba here. This is Bubba the humpback whale right here. And he is a reminder to us that God is always with us. There might be things that we have to do. They might be a little hard to do. And for our friend Bubba over here, it's a little harder for him to get his dinner every day than it is for us. We go to our dinner table and sit down and there's dinner there on the table. Or maybe you've cooked it or I've cooked and we prepare food. Bubba doesn't have that. Bubba works together with other humpback whales way under the surface of the water where we can't see. We don't know what's going on down there, but a pod of humpback whales works together. Do you know how they capture their food? They make nets. No, not like nets, like fishermen's nets, not like that because there's no rope that they can use and they don't have hands. So that would be kind of tough. But God made them to be able to do what they need to do so they can have food and they can do the things that they need to do to survive. They blow bubbles. And the great big huge bubbles that they blow all go together to form a type of net where they can capture a school of fish, which is what they eat. And then they can eat. So maybe by himself, Bubba can't do that very well. But when he works with others the way that God created him to work, he can have the food that he needs. Gideon was in the same sort of position. He was told that he needed to do something. He needed to fight. And that God was going to give him strength to be able to fight against this Midianite army, this enemy, the people who were troubling the people of God. Gideon really didn't want to fight, you know. He would rather hide. Remember, that's where we found him at the beginning of our story today, hiding, preparing his grain. But God said to him, I want you to fight. And so he began to call together the men of Israel who were old enough and prepared to fight. They were big enough, they were strong enough, and they could do this. Now, the Midianite army was enormous. It was so, so large. The army of Israel was not quite as big. As a matter of fact, it was much smaller than the Midianite army. And Gideon looked at the thousands of men that he had and talked to the Lord about it a little bit and said, they're not many, we are not many. Do you think if you were Gideon, you would have asked God, please would you send us some more warriors? I would have done that. I would have asked God to give more people to help us fight so that we could have victory. Because if you at least had the same number of warriors that the other army had, then maybe you had a chance to win. Makes sense, right? Do you know sometimes the things that God wants us to do don't really make sense? They're not the way that we expect they're going to be. Poor Gideon. <laughs> he had been afraid before and now he was going to be tested in his belief in God and his trust of God. God asked him to do some certain things. He had to make sure that only the people that God wanted there we're going to be there to fight. God told him, I want you to ask the people, are they afraid? 
and tell the ones who are afraid to fight to go home. What? Shouldn't we teach them? Shouldn't we train them? Shouldn't we give them courage to fight? We need them. Nope, that's not God's way. God said, I want you to tell the ones who are afraid to go home. So Gideon gathered the army together and he said, how many are afraid? And for everyone who indicated they were afraid to fight, he said, okay, you can go home. That cut the army down by a whole huge number. But you know, God wasn't finished yet. He then said to Gideon, we're going to test something. We want to see how it is that the men of Israel fight. But we're not testing their fighting right now. We're testing the way they drink water. Excuse me? Say what? Could you just say that one more time, Lord? Did you say we're going to test these warriors by seeing how they drink water? Now today, we might pick up a bottle of water, just take the cap off and take a drink, or maybe we'll pour some of it into a cup and take a drink. I don't have a straw here right now, but maybe we'll put a straw in the cup and drink from a straw. I don't think they had water bottles in Gideon's day. And I don't think they had straws either. So how would they drink? God said, I want you to tell them to get something to drink. So they went where there was water outside a brook. And God told Gideon to watch. And for all the men who picked up the water and brought it to their mouths, that was one group. They drank from their hands like that. But there was another group of men who bent their heads down low to the water and they drank that way. Only one group could stay and fight. And there were only 300 who were remaining to stay and fight. Hmm, I wonder which group it was that God said could stay and fight. It was the ones who brought the water up to their mouths with their hands. They stayed. All of the others had to go home, Pastor Peterson. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, now there were only 300 men. From thousands and thousands, there were now only 300, and they had to fight. But there was something other that God wanted to do with these men as well. Not only were they few in number, but he didn't give them big swords and cannons and guns and knives and all of those things to fight with. If you got a piece of paper or a paper napkin or something like that tissue paper before, and you can, I want you to take that right now and I want you to scrunch it all up so it looks a little bit scrunched up just like this. So if you've got a piece of paper, it might be you just poke your finger in the middle and just scrunch it up because you're going to pretend that something like that looks like a flaming torch, a light, a flame. Now, obviously, I have some made and there's one other thing you're going to need. So if you don't have paper, don't worry about it. You can still fight with Gideon. Because God used torches and he used trumpets. So you can put your hands together like this with a hole in the middle. What's it sound like, Pastor Peterson, when we do that? <laughs> Just like that. So, have you ever heard of anybody going to war with torches and trumpets? <laughs> oh, God does things the way that he knows is best. So God sent Gideon and the army into battle with torches and with trumpets. And when the enemy saw the light, when they heard the trumpets, they were confused. They couldn't figure out what was happening because God was doing things his way, not the way they thought they were going to. Gideon had to say, 
I might feel a little afraid, but I trust in you, God, because I know you are always with me. And the men of Israel who fought with him also had to remember that God was with them always. So they went with their trumpets and they went with their torches. And you know, God worked in such a way that the Midianite army was so confused about what they were seeing and what they were hearing. They were not fighting against the children of God. They started fighting against each other. Midianite against Midianite and they ran away. God gave victory to his people because they trusted him even when they were afraid. God told them to do some very strange things. And maybe there might be some strange things that God is telling you to do. No matter what challenge you're facing today, if you will ask God what you should do, and then if you will do what God gives you to do, you will have victory. Let's pray and say thank you to God that he is always with us, that he never leaves us, and he gives us the strength and courage to do things his way, and then all is well. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for our time and kids' time today. We thank you for the truth, God, that you are always with us. You never leave us. And we thank you that even when you ask us to do things differently than we might have imagined, God, it always works out just right. We thank you that you gave courage to Gideon and that you helped him to trust you, that he came out of hiding and he was strong because you are strong in him. We thank you, Jesus, that you do that for us. And I want to pray for my friends today who are watching, Lord, that if they are facing a challenge, whether it's very big or small even, you will help them to trust in you and not be afraid. Help us to remember, just like it says in the book of Joshua, that you, God, are with us wherever we go. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, don't forget to go read more about the story of Gideon in the book of Judges today. Your memory verse for this week, the verse to just put in your mind and think about all the time, is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Write that down and see if you can commit that to memory. See if you can hide it in your heart. You never know when you're going to need to remember that. It's been wonderful to spend time with you here this morning. I want to invite you to come right back to the church Facebook page at 1015 today for some great worship songs that you can join along with at home. Sing along if you want to. Or if you don't feel like singing, just listen and talk to God about how amazing and wonderful he is. And then we'll see you again at 1030. We're going to be inside recording today and hearing the word of God for our whole family. So gather everybody together and we'll see you again in just a few minutes. Bye for now.